Hi everyone, welcome back to Waterhouse House Ford. This video is a first part of a two-part uh, series on restoring the distributor for the TED20. In this first part, I uh, am dismantling the distributor primarily to determine the condition of the distributor uh, and to try and work out what, if anything, needs, um, needs sorting out. The correct distributor for this tractor is a D3A4 distributor. Um, if you followed in some of our previous videos, uh, the, in the comments there was a, a comment from Lance over at uh, Bundy Bear Shed where he shared that information. Now it turns out that this distributor is not the correct one for this tractor even though it's actually stamped D3A4 on the nameplate. But, um, if you get to part two, you'll see, I'll talk a little bit more about that. The distributor looks to be in pretty good condition. Um, obviously, it's a little dirty. Um, in fact, it's quite dirty, um, certainly on the outside, but there's really uh, very little uh, that I could see wrong with it. It's easier to get rid of these clips right at the start because um, they tend to get in the way. They're held in with split um, and so really it's just a case of bending back the, um, the little legs on the one side trying to get it as straight as possible uh, on this first one I didn't manage to get it quite as straight as I would have liked and uh, it proves to be a little bit more difficult to pull the pin out from the other side but a little bit of uh, encouragement and it does eventually come out These clips are looking a little bit worse for wear. They, um, initially I thought they were just dirty, um, but when I cleaned them up I found that they were actually quite um, quite rusted and quite pitted as well. Uh, but I managed to get them cleaned up nicely and get them got them nice and smooth with a little bit of wire brushing and um, some fine emery cloth um, and that, that seemed to sort them out quite quite well. Just removing the second one now, it uh, managed to get that one quite a bit straighter and uh, it's very easy to, to pull out as a result. Generally, you should uh, replace split pins uh, when you're putting, putting things back together. Um, so it doesn't matter if you, if you break it when, you, when you're removing it because generally you're going to replace it anyway. Next thing to get out of the way is the uh, the bracket at the bottom. This is the bracket which holds the distributor in place once you've set the timing uh, on the on the engine. It just has a single bolt uh, clamp, which um, is quite easy to remove, and then the whole thing just slides off the bottom. Again, that cleans up uh, cleans up nice and. Uh, nice and clean and it always looks good um, if you if you give those a little bit of a polish as well sitting under the distributor now this this is the electrical post this is the where the power comes in um, it's normally a feed from the from the coil um, essentially it's power into the uh, distributor and it um, obviously feeds the condenser the capacitor and uh, it provides the spark across the points as well. Now that needs to be insulated from the rest of the distributor. Um, so essentially that's your positive um, side of the power and the body of the distributor is your negative. So you've got to keep that insulated. So what you find is uh, lots of little nuts, washers, insulators, um, and you yeah, plastic and I think uh, Bakelite right at the end uh, just to keep everything separated from the body. It's easiest to remove the condenser um, and the points kind of at the same time um, so it's easier just to loosen all the screws 
um, get everything loose and then it's um, actually quite easy to, to remove the electrical connections as well. I find it easiest just to loosen the screws. They're so small um, and you struggle to get your fingers in there. I find it easy just to loosen them until they are loose and then just turn the thing upside down, obviously on a on a flat surface on a paper towel or something so you can so that the thing doesn't run away from you. But um, somewhere it's gonna where you know you're gonna be able to catch it. And that saves you having to try and stick your fingers inside there to um, to find those little screws. There is a rubber grommet around that um, that electrical post as well, and that's primarily to keep moisture, dust, and pretty much anything else out uh, of the distributor as well. You want your distributor to be quite well sealed from essentially the elements. Obviously, it sits on the side of the of the engine and is exposed to to pretty much everything uh, in the environment. So you do want to try and keep it um, keep keep it well sealed. Just need to find the right spanner to remove these nuts. From memory, I think it's a size 8 uh, millimeter. And that, um, they're just little brass nuts um, and the bolters as well, so you do want to keep. Uh, yeah, you do want to be careful with them and not um, not apply too much pressure. And to be honest, they shouldn't be tight. Um, they should just be snug. So hopefully, you won't have any problems removing removing those. And once you've removed the final nut, um, or at least loosened it, you'll find that the uh, connectors for the points and for the um, condenser will will slip out easily. So that's the, the main part of the points. Uh, you've got a spring, a spring steel arm, which uh, provides the electrical electrical connection, and then you've got the the point itself, which is uh, one side of the, um, the the arc pad, I think they call it, and the other side is actually on the on the base of the of the points. The condenser should come out pretty easily now as well. And that's just a, a spade terminal. On this one, it's a spade terminal. Um, I think originally these had uh, there would have been a wire strap um, which ran from the condenser to the to that post as well. Um, but if you don't have that, there's nothing wrong with uh, with putting a, a decent size uh, wire in there. It doesn't have to be massive. Um, sort of two millimeter diameter should should suffice. Just checking the cam lobes on uh, all the lobes on the cam. They they all seem pretty good. Sometimes you can get um, if you get rough spots on the cam, you want to you want to try and clean that up if it's not too bad. Um, and you also want your your high points to be reasonably high um, and not too smoothed out. That shouldn't generally happen, uh, but do just check and make sure that you have distinct high points. They shouldn't be uh, 90 degrees. They shouldn't be perpendicular. They should be rounded. Um, but you don't want anything that's going to snag or, or catch on the cam follower that, um, that sits on the, on the points, which is just a, a small Bakelite follower. Uh, so you don't want anything that's going to um, damage that on, your, on the cam itself.
Now given that that's meant to be making an electrical connection, um, it's quite dirty and uh, again you do want that to be quite clean. There's the nameplate, um, again I'll discuss it more in part two. Um, it's not often that you that, that, they, that they survive. Um, I was quite pleased to find the nameplate still uh, fastened to the to the body. Um, it does make life a little easier if you know exactly uh, what the part number is. So just removing this base plate now. So this base plate sits um, is essentially what the points in the condenser ride on, um, and underneath that you'll find the um, the centrifugal um, advance mechanism, uh, advance and retard mechanism. Uh, essentially how that works is uh, when the distributor is, or when the engine is running slow, uh, typically at idle, the weights are held close to the, uh, to the, to the center shaft and as the engine speeds up they, they get flung out uh, towards the outside of the distributor and that typically will advance your timing slightly um, to give you just a little bit more power as your engine speed increases. So they're operating freely, so no concerns there. Now, the shaft is held in by a rolled pin, um, which slides through that bottom gear, or um, it's, it's a dog gear, I think they call it. So there's a roll pin in there. Uh, you just need to dig around, clean out uh, any muck in there so you can see it clearly and um, identify where you're going to punch it out. You want to use a small punch for that, um, say between two and three millimeters in diameter, uh, no, no, nothing bigger than that, otherwise you won't, um, you won't knock it out cleanly. That does need to be done on the in the bus. Um, so unfortunately, I moved away from the camera. I, um, I knocked it out with a punch, and you can see it there, just uh, still sitting in the in the, uh, the dog gear. So just pull that out, and that releases the whole the whole mechanism. Just before we remove it, I have also made two witness marks, one on the shaft and one on the, on the gear itself. And the reason for that is the, it, it, it's quite difficult to discern, but the, those dog teeth are actually slightly off-center. Um, and they, uh, that means it can only go one way into, uh, into the camshaft. And that just ensures that the, um, the distributor is always in time. With your, with your valves essentially. So that needs to go back the same way. Um, so you want to make sure that you mark both the top of the shaft and the bottom of the dog gear just on one side so that you know which side goes together when, when you put it back together. Now the, the shaft will now come out. Um, there is a bush at the bottom and there's a bearing at the top. So it does need to be encouraged out. Um, just light tapping with, um, with a small hammer, preferably something like a copper-faced hammer or a wooden mallet or the handle of a screwdriver as most people have those more handy. Let's tap it out gently. Um, primarily it's the bearing that you need to uh, unseat. Just give it a final tap with the, with a small hammer and uh, it should pop out. And there you go. So as I said, push down the bottom, right down the bottom there, and bearing on the, uh, on the top of the shaft, sitting under that uh, plate that the counterweight sit on. This one's an open bearing and uh, it feels great. There's absolutely no movement there, there's no noise coming from it, no vibration or rumbling or anything like that. Um, I think that this, this distributor has been 
uh, probably recently reconditioned. Um, I doubt that it's the original from the yeah, armor tractor. And in fact, we know that it's not the original because it's not the exact right distributor. Again, counterweights are nice and free, and there's only um, a tiny little bit of play, which is what you want. You want them to be free, you want them to be able to move freely with no drag. Now there's a screw in the top here. Um, it's a soft metal screw, so do be careful, be gentle with it. It also has a hole through its center, which is, uh, allows you to, to oil down the center shaft. And again, it should come off pretty easily. It should be firm, but it shouldn't be over tightened. And that holds the top shaft, essentially the cam shaft, or the shaft, the, the part of the shaft with the cam on it. That now slides off and disengages from the counterweights. It all looks good, and uh, I'm happy with that condition. The shaft as well now. As I said, you normally put a little bit of oil down the top of that shaft and there are two, I think it's two, very small holes on the side of the shaft which allows the oil to come out and keep everything uh, lubricated under the base plate. You don't want oil anywhere near your points, but under that base plate uh, you want a small amount of oil just to keep everything in, in, inside there moving, moving freely. There's also right at the bottom uh, where my right thumb is, there are, um, it's, it looks like a thread and it's designed basically to push oil down the shaft back into the crankcase. Um, obviously there's oil in the, in and around the crank, uh, sorry, the um, camshaft, which this engages with and oil can make its way up the shaft and what that sort of counter thread does is it essentially pushes oil back down into the crankcase. So it allows it to come up a certain amount, uh, you know, a certain way up the, up the shaft, and then pushes it back down again. So again, your distributor doesn't become flooded with oil. That bush as well, it looks really good. Uh, no scoring whatsoever. Um, it feels that you know, the shaft um, fits nice and, nice and snug and uh, I'm not going to bother to, to, to replace that. If you needed to, it's really easy just to knock that out and knock a new one uh, in from, from the bottom. So you knock it out from the top and knock it back in from the bottom. So that's the end of this part one. The distributor is now completely dismantled. Um, all that remains really is to clean everything up. As I said, it's in really good condition and no, no major work is required. Just a good cleaning and uh, reassembly, which we'll do in part two. Thanks for joining us and hope to see you in the next video.